class is on uh, rigid esophagoscope i I'll, i'll explain about the uh, names of different types of rigid esophagoscopes the indications of esophagoscopy the procedure of esophagoscopy and the complications of esophagoscopy okay so this is a rigid esophagoscope and depending upon illumination whether it is distal illumination or proximal illumination we have two uh, named one one is chevalier jackson and the if you get an illumination at the distal end that is chevalier jackson like this this one is chevalier jackson and if the illumination is at the proximal end this end that is fullers so c for d chevalier jackson is for distal illumination and the fullers is for proximal illumination which one is better if we if we get a, a light source at the distal end or if we get it at the proximal definitely the prox uh, distal illumination that is towards the mucosa get better illumination is the best one than a proximal illumination okay so two types of rigid esophagoscopes uh chevalier jackson this one and fullers length of chevalier jackson uh actually the length of esophagus is 25 cm from trichopharynx up to the opening of uh, diaphragm it is 25 cm so the length of chevalier jackson's rigid esophagoscope is around 42 to 45 cm from the end air length one end to another it is 42 to 45 cm and you can see markings here and this markings are to know the uh, level of the tip of esophagoscope so this is according to the constrictions of esophagus so the first there are four constrictions when we measure from the upper lateral incisor teeth the first one is cricopharynx which is 15 cm from upper lateral incisor second that is when we reach the first 15 cm when we uh, introduce the esophagoscope and when it reaches upper uh, this 15 cm mark which is the upper lateral incisors we can know that the tip is at the cricopharynx and when it reaches 25 cm that is the tip will be at arch of aorta from upper lateral incisor and when at 28 cm from the upper lateral incisors the tip is at the left bronchus and the fourth constriction is at the diaphragm that is 40 cm from the upper lateral incisors these are important the first landmark is 15 cm that is it reaches the cricopharynx then arch of aorta left bronchus and diaphragm and these are the constrictions of esophagus so curvatures in the esophagus not in the esophagoscope but so the curvatures of the esophagus are two side to side curvatures both towards left side and one at the root of neck and other at the lower end one at the root of neck and another one at the lower end and andro posterior curvatures correspond to the cervical thoracic spine and this one is in the esophagus and not in the esophagoscope esophagoscope rigid esophagoscope is a straight one and in the indications we have both diagnostic and therapeutic what is diagnostic that is to find out the cause therapeutic as a part of treatment diagnostic indications are investigation of dysphagia for dysphagia we do so many dysphagia is difficult in swallowing why it, uh, there is difficulty in swallowing so as a part of investigation and to visualize any foreign body structure esophagus and growth in the esophagus and also to take biopsy from any esophageal lesions and the therapeutic indication comes removal of foreign body dilatation of esophageal structures and also to pass bogies and sclerotherapy of esophageal varices these are the therapeutic indications so indication diagnostic and therapeutic position is boys position or the um, barking dog position or sniffing the morning air position similar to that explained along with is uh, bronchoscopy holding of the esophagoscope is very important use your dominant hand for me it is the right hand so hold the 
esophagoscope in your dominant hand like a pen holding as you hold a pen hold it and the left hand or the non dominant hand act as a support at the lower end so this one hold it with the right hand you hold it like a pen and the left hand uh, should help in uh, introduction and also while uh, taking it out so the fingers are like this and these three fingers will retract the upper lip and these two will help in forward movement okay so this one you hold it uh, like a pen the right hand and the left hand the thumb and the index finger will help in introduction and these three fingers will retract the upper lip and also along with the uh, teeth okay so this is how you have to look inside and with this you introduce this should be the movement see my three fingers these three fingers are uh, retracting the upper lip and the index finger and the thumb is helping in introduction okay and i am holding it with the my right hand in a pen holding position so i look inside and i will introduce it like this so this is the movement these two while taking out also it's very important that while taking out also you have to look inside into the lumen and take it out otherwise there is sometime there will be foreign bodies like rings so if it is think this is a ring and if you have introduced it through the ring you cannot see any foreign body you will miss it so while introduce uh, taking it out if you are looking into the lumen and taking it out you will not you will not miss that okay so while introduction uh, your left hand uh, should help in introduction and also while taking it out and you should remember to look inside while you take the uh, esophagoscope outside for rigid esophagoscopy patient is in boys position and it was position was explained along with the class in bronchoscopy and advanced esophagoscope through the oral cavity on the right side of tongue pharynx and right pudiform fossa and now you can see the uh, larynx and this is arytenoids to gently elevate the arytenoids then you can see cricopharynx under general anesthesia the cricopharyngeal sphincter is usually relaxed and the instrument is gently advanced introduce the scope only after seeing the lumen on reaching the mid thorax that is when you see the pulsations of arch of aorta the tip of scope is advanced towards the left anterior superior iliac spine and on reaching the uh, stomach you can see the change in the pattern of mucosa yes now it is clearly visible there is a definite change in the appearance of mucosa towards the uh, stomach end see and this is a case of uh, rigid esophagoscopy done in a case of foreign body impacted at the cricopharyngeal sphincter and if there is a foreign body at the cricopharynx or any uh, obstruction at the cricopharynx there will be pooling in both piriform fossa which is called jackson sign you can see the impacted meat and uh, which was removed using the foreign body removal forceps these are the contraindications of rigid esophagoscopy one is trismus you cannot open the mouth don't do a rigid esophagoscopy diseases of the cervical spine like cervical trauma spondylosis and kyphosis don't go with the rigid scopy and aneurysm of arch of aorta for fear of rupture and fatal hemorrhage if there is a contraindication then don't go with rigid instead go with a flexible esophagoscopy 
So all these are contraindications of rigid esophagoscopy. Uh, the complications we can divide into that due to anesthesia and complications due to procedure itself. So under anesthesia complication comes aspiration, arrhythmias, drug reactions, cardiac arrest, etc. And in the procedure, the common complications, one is bleeding and second is injury. Injury to which all structures, injury to the lips, injury to the teeth, injury to the pleura, leading to pneumothorax. The most dreaded complication is an esophageal perforation. So cervical esophagus at the level of cricopharynx is the most common site of this esophageal perforation. That is uh, the cervical esophagus at the level of cricopharynx. That is the commonest site of esophageal perforation.